Hi, everyone, and welcome to Qualitative Research as Embodied Knowledge and Cultural Story. This is going to be an opportunity to understand how qualitative methodology seeks to understand the stories of bodies and the stories of the cultures that they're in. First, I want to talk about the paradigms we research from. You can think of a paradigm as a worldview or a cultural lens, a way to understand what is around us. So we're going to start with the discourse of representation. And the discourse of representation believes that there is a capital T truth out there to uncover, that reality and knowledge exists apart from us individually, and we can go out and discover it. This idea came from the Enlightenment and the scientific method. And as people realized they could study nature and they could study atoms, that therefore they could also come to ultimate truth about humans, being able to predict our behavior and our reactions. Over time, we realize that people are just not as easy to predict as atoms. That said, a lot of people still come from this idea in the discourse of representation thinking, while maybe we can't apply our knowledge to all people, we can be as unbiased and separated from our data to be able to apply it to as many people as possible. Next came the discourse of understanding. And discourse of understanding pushed back against the discourse of representation. It was the idea that human beings are not atoms and we really can't know how they're going to act, how they're going to feel as a large group. But we can invest and understand individuals, understand their bodies and what it means to live the world in their flesh and bones. Now, the discourse of suspicion pushed back against the discourse of understanding. And the discourse of suspicion said, we can't just look at individual experiences at face value, assuming all of them have the same power and influence in society. Discourse of suspicion said, having money, being the dominant race, having influence as a citizen of that society, being a valued body, uh, which could be based on disability, uh, could be based on age, could be based on race, in some way could impact how that body moves through the world. They knew for sure that it impacted, that people were marginalized. And those people that were marginalized, those people that experienced stigma, were not having the same opportunities as those dominant bodies in society. And for this, women, this reason, they began the discourse of suspicion that pushed back and said, we need to understand not only the individual story of that body, but how that story reveals the power structures, how some people have power over others, how in some ways we are a society dominated by masculinity, dominated by whiteness, dominated by privilege and, and classism, dominated by nationality, dominated by being able-bodied. And if you don't fit in to these different categories, then you are not going to experience the same level of opportunity as people who are. And we'll talk about that throughout the semester. And last is discourse of vulnerability. And discourse of vulnerability is in some ways pushing back against the discourse of suspicion. In some ways, it pushes back against the discourse of understanding. And it definitely pushes back against the discourse of representation. But what it highlights is that these power structures that we have are created by human beings interacting in the world and can be dismantled by those same human beings interacting. That every moment, that we have a communicative encounter, power emerges in that space and we can push back against it. We can think about how we have pushed back against sexism. We have pushed back against homophobia. We have pushed back against classism. 
We have pushed back against racism. And when this happens, we are able to flip the system, have people start thinking in brand new ways. And that's the power of qualitative research because these encounters you're having, this data you're collecting, can have people start interacting in different ways. And with this new knowledge, they can shift society. They can move these power structures and change things. So questions in qualitative research center on how is meaning socially constructed by individual bodies interacting with each other in cultures? So again, reality isn't out there to uncover, but it is both created and changed through how bodies interact in the world. And we trace that process through qualitative research. Uh, just to know that this idea, it does come from the hermeneutic tradition. And that idea that we think of both the historical experiences of bodies and how that's, that's situated in culture and how that is affecting how this interaction is happening, which is why we always situate any story that's told, any culture we observe, any data we collect in the cultural moment and context it's occurring in. Also think of this idea of qualitative research is rooted in existential phenomenology. What existential phenomenology tells us is that bodies interacting in the world become experts in what it's like to live through their body and understand how culture interacts with their body, the opportunities their body is able to acquire, and therefore, listening to those stories means that we can understand how people with very similar embodiments and cultural positions have potentially similar experiences. So motives for qualitative research. There can be a finding. Is there a truth to uncover this new knowledge of how human beings work? Can we deeply understand a phenomenon, something that a lot of people experience, can be emancipation in that our goal is to reveal these power structures and resist them, and also deconstruction that goes beyond emancipation to say, is there a way not only to replace one power structure with another, but to get rid of power altogether and have this egalitarian moment between human beings? Now, a lot of people see this as a utopian goal, but it's still there. One thing to understand with qualitative research is your primary re research instrument is you. You analyze your experience. You can listen to an interview. You conduct a focus group. You can absorb a observe a culture. So there is this idea of no matter what, when we're moving through qualitative research, no matter what kind of qualitative research you're doing, you are the vessel that is collecting data. It's all processed through your body. And it's you watching and interacting with other bodies. So there is this idea of it's a body studying a body. Remember, you're watching these bodies move through culture. It's not just their isolated experience, but the context in which it's happening. Remember, we go in with an open mind. You shouldn't just try to prove your suspicion ever, right? We have biases, we have preconceived notions, but remember that from that phenomenological perspective, that individual is the expert. So listen to them, ask clarification questions, but don't try to turn their story into yours. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a hypothesis and then seeking to prove it through experimentation but that's quantitative, not qualitative methodology. Remember that whenever we present this data, you're going to use words, you're gonna use pictures rather than numbers to display your findings. So this idea of remember, it's all about description, visual and verbal description. We don't quantify anything. And now that you have this overview, you're ready to begin.